Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Drop Drive by Phase Shift Games. It plays one to four players, takes about 30 minutes to play, and is for ages eight and up. And in the game Drop Drive, you are going to be utilizing your newly created ship and its newly installed Drop Drive to plop down onto unexplored locations, gathering asteroids, picking up passengers, and taking them across the galaxy to planets to then turn them in for credits. In your objective, gather as much money as possible while upgrading your ship to the best of your ability. Don't forget the unknown specimens that you can acquire that will accumulate you even more credits by game's end. Will you score the most points in the vast reaches of outer space or be left in the dust by your opponents in this newly crafted and designed style game where you're dropping things down from the table like their previous games Dungeon Drop and Dungeon Drop Too Deep. This is the third in succession and a different game all entirely with some unique mechanics that come back from the previous games. Let's take a look at the game and how to set it up then I'll explain how to play and finally my review. So here we have the game Drop Drive all set up for two players and to begin the game all you'll need to do is first a create the board. Now this board is set up into a triangle but generally speaking Speaking, it will be a circle. The reason why I have a triangle here is because the table is small and I did not want to take up too much space, but you have three of these different little folding things and you'll be placing them into a circle. Then you'll be taking the sun marker and you just place it right in the middle, basically in the middle of your galaxy here. Go ahead and then deal out the five different planets that will be in the game. You'll place them on different face-up sides depending on the variant of the mode, but we'll be going ahead and placing it on the basic mode side and then we're going to go ahead and also take these ships here that are the pirate ships and placing them on each of the planets based on their color. Depending on the number of players, you'll take these markers here. In a two-player game, you'll have eight. In a three-player game, you'll add an extra four. And then in a four-player game, you'll add an extra four on top of that. But you will still need extras, so set all of them aside, even depending on the number of players, it doesn't matter. Then, additionally, each player is going to get their own player board area. The first thing they're going to get is the front of the ship and then followed by a back of the ship. You go ahead and deal them out randomly with the decks of cards that are given to you in the game so that you're always gonna have unique and interesting spaceship combinations. Give each player a ship of a certain color and of course a die of that ship's color. There's also going to be a drop drive token and you'll be placing that face up with the lit side face up anywhere near your ship. Additionally, you're going to be getting three cards. These are your upgrade cards in the game. And when you get these three cards, you'll simply choose two of them and then discard one, and it'll go into the discard pile. And finally, you'll be needing the drop drive uh, link here, which is how, how you're going to be setting up movement and of course dropping in the game. Go ahead and choose the numbers based on one of your two settings and place it next to you. You'll be moving them and changing it as the game goes on. Additionally, form the rest of the deck of upgrades here. Make sure that they are shuffled and all of the additional credits, which are the victory points in the game that you'll be needing and drop drive tokens somewhere within reach of all players. After that, you can take the rest of your front and back end ships and any of the ships and die you're not playing with for depending on the number of players in the game and set them aside as well and you're ready to begin the game. Let's do it. So setup is basically complete, but there's one additional thing before choosing the fanciest ship for the player to begin the game. There's a bunch of extra tokens in the game, and these are going to be different salvage tokens, there's going to be fuel tokens, there's going to be the different planets tokens, and then of course all these asteroids as well. Take them and put them in the first player's hand, uh, and then you're going to drop them right on top of the planet here. And you want to be about six inches above the planet when you drop them. You'll simply go ahead and uh, drop them and try and make sure that they're all angled. And if there's any of them touching the outer edge of the map here, you can kind of pick them up and then you can go ahead and drop them again. Now, of course, like I said, if uh, this is a smaller playing board, but uh, if there is any on your bigger playing board that touch the edge here or land on the top of the sun here, go ahead and drop them once again until you get kind of like a sp spread out area of all the different planets and all the different asteroids so that it's random. And then choose the fanciest ship and that player will begin the game. And to begin the game, the player who is basically the improvised horizon will be going first by selecting two of their upgrades. And this player might suggest to keep a, we'll keep that one there, a specimen. And then we'll also keep one of the ship upgrades, which will actually increase the size of your ship. 
then discarding the other one. And then of course the other player at this time can do the same as well, maybe including a passenger that they would like to keep and of course an upgrade as well and discarding one they do not need. These upgrades are going to give you different unique things on your ship, maybe, maybe more drop drive tokens, maybe they're going to let you do a unique ability in the game. And then you're also going to have uh, and little slots too. And you're also going to have passengers and passengers will allow you to gain some type of unique benefit when you drop them off at the required planets they want you to drop them off at. And each of the different passengers will have a colored symbol on the bottom, top right of the card. So you're going to have this one here wants to be dropped off at a blue or a white planet. And when you do so, you'll get the unique effect of two credits for each asteroid sold at this planet. And then, of course, you're going to have these specimens. And specimens are going to give you end of game triggers that will give you bonuses based on what they say at the bottom here. So at the end of the game, whatever this says is what you'll be scoring and you'll be wanting to work towards them through the end of the game. After that, then, of course, like I said, this player here is going to go ahead and begin and have a begin. Well, they're going to drop on the board just like dungeon drop, but with a unique little twist here. They are going to be using their drop drive. The top left number of your ship is going to represent your drop drive, which is how far you're going to have to place your unit on this little stick here to drop your spaceship. Uh, the other end of your board here is going to be your rocket drive. That is how far your spaceship can move after it has been dropped. You'll have two other symbols. One is going to be in reference to how much additional bonuses you have against bad guys. And the other one is going to be how many cards you draw when basically gathering upgrades whenever you land on a planet. Then they're going to be able to move their spaceship uh, the length of the, uh, the rocket drive. They could be different symbols. And because of that, this little piece here actually can be popped off. So you can go ahead and change this depending on the number of your drop drive and your rocket drive. But in this case, it's six and six, which makes it nice and easy. I recommend after dropping your ship to go ahead and just flip it up just like, like just flip it up. So that way uh, you're going to be able to have an easier time moving this thing along. And basically you can rearrange this specific uh, rocket drive token to kind of move to go where you want, which will then net you additional bonus things because you're trying to get through the asteroids and the salvages and the fuel to place them onto your cargo. And then you'll gather them and place them on the slots indicated on your cards, much like the game Galaxy Trucker. After you have initiated your drop drive and your rocket drive, the uh, only thing you can really other do otherwise is if you had additional drop drive tokens, you could then go ahead and drop again. But otherwise, you're just simply going to end your turn. And the next player will get a chance to go, thusly picking up their little spaceship here, choosing the length based on their drop drive, which in this case is three, and then dropping it somewhere on the board, making it a little easier to guarantee where you want the spaceship to go and then selecting the cargo that they would like to get and moving it across and gathering and placing it on their little cargo spaces. And after that, then the next turn is just going to pass and it's gonna repeat like that. Now there is some unique little twists to the game. First of all, after you've gathered your cargo, you're gonna want it to hit a planet. So when you go ahead and choose to drop or just choose to move, uh, when you get to a planet, so if I got to a planet specifically like this, a uh, white one here, blue or green, whatever, you are then going to take your spaceship and move to that specific colored planet. Then you're going to initiate a certain number of orders. The first thing that you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and flip over your drop drive tokens from the back end to the front end, thusly allowing you to utilize them and leave the planet. The next thing you're going to be able to do is take out passengers, deliver them to the locations they'd like to go to. All the passengers that have the same colors all allocated on them as the planet you are at can be dropped off and any of their powers can then be utilized. The next thing that you can do is turn in salvage tokens. When you turn in salvage tokens, you're going to be able to draw a card from the upgrade deck. And when you do so, you'll be able to place it on your spaceship as an upgrade or as some other type of unique resource that you can utilize, whether it be specimens or of course, whether it be increasing the number of ship parts you have or passengers. The next thing after that is you can then go ahead and sell asteroids based on the planet you're at, will determine what type of asteroids you can sell. And when you choose to sell asteroids, you'll be taking them from your board here. And in this case, the only asteroids I can sell are, uh, are, are these ones here. So I can go ahead and sell these ones. When I do so, I'll gain a certain number of credits. 
and I will then go ahead and place a marker on the planet indicating that I have sold that specific uh, type of resource. And of course, that is also in which the, a game ending trigger. It's a way that the game will end as these pieces go on to the locations here. All the asteroids and all the other items that you have sold throughout the uh, time in which you're on the planet are then going to get dropped back into the solar system. The next thing you'll do is you'll explore the planet's surface. You'll check your surface rating and then you'll draw that many cards, select one and install that part to your ship, discarding the rest of the cards. And you're going to then go ahead and take the unique little guy here, this uh, little pirate spaceship here, and you're going to drop it onto the board as well because he's now going to activate. And every single other pirate ship will activate as well, provided it's not the first pirate ship to drop on the board. There's going to be multiple on the board there, and they're going to do whatever the specific planet says. And in this case, it's going to go ahead and take a white asteroid and collect it. Now that pirate ships are on the board, you can utilize your spaceships to fight pirate ships. The way you do that is simple. You'll take your rocket drive, you'll move over the specific ship that you want to fight, you and a op opponent will roll a die, and if you can get better than that die number, utilizing your bonus, then you are going to capture the rocket ship or the bad guy's pirate ship, place it back on the planet, and gather the asteroids that it had taken over. If a rocket uh, pirate ship takes more than three asteroids of the specific type they're going for, what's going to end up happening is they're going to return to their home planet, you'll take all those asteroids off of that planet, and you'll drop them down on the sun. Additionally, if you lose to a pirate ship, you're just going to go ahead and redrop it out into the solar system, and nothing else will happen. Then continue the game. And that's basically the idea of the game Drop Drive. Dropping down your rocket ship, uh, moving it around the board using, utilizing your rocket drive, gathering specific resources, heading to planets, taking those resources and dumping them off, dropping off trip passengers, collecting specimens, improving your ship, until the point in which all these tokens are used up. And as you use up the tokens, the resources that you have sold at that specific planet will re be reduced in cost most likely, and when there's none left, none of these tokens left, the game will trigger an ending, in which case every other player is going to make an emergency landing to one of the planets that they're closest to and turn in as much stuff as they can. Then tally up all of the points that you have, whether it be specimens, credits you've already previously gained, or anything that you've sold on the planet that you made an emergency landing on, and whoever has the most credits in the game drop drive is the winner. And, and that's it. All right, so review time. Well, as you may or may not know, I have reviewed the game Dungeon Drop and Dungeon Drop Too Deep, and both of those games are excellent. Excellent, excellent games. I've played them many, many times and have kept them in my collection, so that says something. This game is better than both of those. Uh, when I got this game, they were talking about, oh, would you like to review this new game of ours? Yeah, I think we'll enjoy it. I said, yeah, yeah, sounds good. I mean, I liked your previous games. Why, why not take a look at this one, too? Um, and they said, oh, you're going to like this one even more. This one's an even better game. And I'm like, hmm... I really like those games, and if you just make another one of those type of a games, I, I don't know if I'm going to actually be as interested in it, like in my head, you know, because I'm not going to say that. I'm going to, like, I'm going to, you know, we'll see. Let's let's give them benefit of the doubt. Is it, this game is easily the uh, best of the three. This game is a boatload of fun. This game is. Excellent. If I could only choose one of the three games, this would definitely be it. This is the most interesting, unique, strategic game that I have played that involves dropping things on a table, that involves kind of utilizing unique powers. I love the customization of the ships. There's a ton of stuff I love in this game. Uh, first things first. Customizing ships, that's what I want to talk about. The, the ships you start with are unique and random, and you think you get kind of a benefit, but there's always also a drawback on each of them. One of them involves the length in which you're going to be dropping your ship from, which makes a difference, but because the length is long, you'll get a bonus to fighting ships that are on the board here. Additionally, too, if you get a long length of for your rocket drive, then you're also going to get less cards to draw to upgrade your ship which is not great, but moving the ship around the galaxy to get all the things you want is amazing. And so there's these, there's this like, you know, you get something, but you lose something, which is really cool. To note too, there are upgrade cards and upgrading your ship is fun. And it reminded me of Galaxy Trucker and the way you're gathering resources and components basically from the game. And I have to imagine somebody on the team likes Galaxy Trucker and I'm gonna be getting one of the games to try the new Galaxy Trucker, which I'm excited about. And playing this one gave me kind of the nostalgia of when I used to play Galaxy Trucker a whole bunch. And these upgrades will increase your 
Chip's skills. It will allow you to gather more drop drive tokens or increase your uh, credits whenever you do something special or uh, maybe plus one to your rocket drive rating. So it will change the numbers on the back end and front end of your ship if you don't like them to increase them to be even better. And the passengers are unique and interesting as well. You have to take them to certain planets even though you may or may not want to, thusly having to choose your course wisely. You can't just kind of go wherever you want and collect whatever you want, which is kind of what um, Dungeon Drop is. You kind of just drop and see where you are and then, okay, I'm going to make the best possible move I can possibly make. And that's great. I mean, I, I love that game. But this one here adds the strategy of having to kind of plot a course with random elements of crazy dropping, uh, which just in intensified and enhanced the funification of the game. And that, that's a word I will use for this game. <laughs> and yes, yeah, so there's the customization of the ship and being able to put specimens out. You have to actually keep track of like their weight and the type of specimen they are to score you bonus points at the end of the game. Or do you want to focus on customizing your ship? Or do you want to focus on getting rid of passengers? But you have to be careful because you have to get all the passengers at the end of the game and you didn't get them to the location they need to get to, you're going to be in trouble and get no points. So uh, lots of customization in the game. Uh, the drop, the little token, these little things here are awesome. I, I really like, it, it kind of reminded me of uh, the Tiny Epic stuff because of the way they kind of like have a unique little a little thing that kind of adds to the game and you kind of like take these links and put them together. I don't know, but, but it, this is really cool. And the fact that when you're moving the ship, you can kind of like angle it in a way that you want to try and get every little piece that you can. And then you have people going like, that's not close enough. And you know, if you're like me and a stickler, there's a, I use like a little ruler or whatnot. But now in this case, you actually just have one already kind of attached to the game here and based on your skill level of the ship. And then you've got the planets dropping things off. There's a specific order of operations in which they get dropped off. And when they do so, pirate ships start going on the field. In the game that I've played with this variant, and there are multiple variants in the game, like a solo mode, and then there's an advanced mode with the back side of the planet. The pirate ships are going to go out and collect things, and they're kind of like bonus pinatas that you may or may not get, and you may not want to risk it based on the level of your fighting skills of your ship, which is kind of like inducing another element to the game, and they like to do that with these games, and I think there's even going to be more elements to the game that they're going to induce, and this is a really cool one as well. And I'm excited to see what else they come up with, black holes and nebulae. There's a ton of like additional things they can kind of just add to this game by just adding a couple little baby components, so that's really excellent. And then you have these salvage tokens and you have the fuel tokens. Fuel will let you go ahead and re-up your drop drive so you can drop again on a turn, which is really, really powerful. And then salvage tokens are going to allow you to get more upgrades, but sometimes you only get to draw one and it, it's kind of random what you get, which kind of makes your ship more interesting. Additionally to your ship's name changes. First of all, it's the Elusive Enigma, then it's the Elusive Touring Enigma, the Improved Touring Horizon, and so you're constantly changing the name of your ship, which is just an added little bonus that didn't need to be there, but was, and it's, it's cool, it's cool, it's really cool. I enjoy every part of this game. Uh, the one, I guess, negative, I guess I could say about this game is your ship uh, space, your, your planet space, your galaxy space is going to need to be condensed if you have a smaller table. So you're going to want a big table for this game to make as large of an area as you possibly can. I think it's more fun to have a huge galaxy, but you work with what you got. You can even play this game on the floor. There's no reason why you couldn't, which makes this game so versatile. Uh, overall, this is an excellent game. E easy seal of approval. Once again, uh, my favorite of the bunch, a game that is going to be played on our live stream, and you guys can just go ahead and see how fun it is and how you and interesting and all the different twists and turns in the game. As you can tell, I like it. I, I, I really like it. All right, guys, thanks for watching the Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Drop Drive by Facious Games. If you're interested in the game, there's a link down below. Kickstarter currently going on. You can go ahead and pick up the game. I think this game is going to do very, very well. And uh, maybe you should not miss out on the fun because there is a ton of fun to be had in this game. As long as you don't mind a little bit of randomness, and of course, a little bit of strategy. It's 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 a bit it's a little bit of mix of both. I, I tried to think of negatives, but I, I just I'm so biased because it's so fun. <laughs> it, it just 
to me. I don't know. Maybe that doesn't, I don't know if that makes me biased. All right. Also, go check out the website on filtergamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We're doing a giveaway for the drop drive people, so you can check out that as well. And you can also go ahead and check out Moonshell Mermaid Game. It's a game that we made, and it's coming soon. We're going to have an update, I think, today or tomorrow, uh, showing you the rest of the stuff that we're doing. And of course, if you want, you can subscribe to the channel. Get that subscribe button, the bell button, notification button. It does help you get notified for more videos, see more games just like this one be played on the channel live streams, and of course, more reviews. Patreon members, thank you so much. A dollar a month goes a long way and helps us promote shipping and doing more uh, content for you guys every week as much as I possibly can do. As always, guys, I appreciate it. And I look forward to uh, dropping down with my drop dive and then rocket driving over to you next time.